This is the tutorial regarding calculating slopes of a line. We will cover five important topics. First, we will discuss determining slope of a line when given two points. Next, we'll talk about writing equations in the slope-intercept form. Next, we'll talk about finding an equation of a line when given two points. Then we'll discuss finding equations of parallel lines. And finally, we'll go over finding equations of perpendicular lines. Let's get started. First, we will discuss determining the slope of a line when given two points. An easy way to think about the concept of slope is to think about a staircase. Basically, as you know, the stairs go up in a uniform rate. So we have the horizontal distance, which in math is called the run. And then we also have the same vertical distance on each stair, and that's known as the rise. So we have both the run and then we have what's known as the rise. Each step contains exactly the same horizontal run and the same vertical rise. The ratio of the rise to the run is called the slope. It's the numerical measurement of the steepness of the staircase. The ratio of the rise to the run is known as the slope. It is a numerical measure of the steepness of the staircase. For example, if the run is increased and the rise remains the same, the staircase becomes less steep. But if the run is kept the same and the rise is increased, the staircase becomes more steep. This important characteristic of a line is best defined using rectangular coordinates. And as you can see, if we were to draw a line, we would get a line that hits the top of each stair like so. And we can describe that in a mathematical equation. The basic definition of slope can be defined as follows. If we have p x1 y1 and q x2 y2 as two distinct points, then if x does not equal x2, the slope m of the non-vertical line L containing both p and q is defined by this formula. Slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And again, x1 does not equal x2. If x1 does equal x2, L is a vertical line and the slope m of L is undefined since this results in division by zero. Let's go ahead and see graphically what that definition looks like when we graph it. You'll notice on the graph on the left hand side, we have two points. We have point P, x1, y1, and then we have point Q, X2, Y2. So you can see the distance here horizontally. We have the run, which is X2 minus X1, and then the rise, which goes vertically up, which is defined as Y2 minus Y1. And when we connect the points, we see that there is a line going through points P and Q. So this diagram basically shows us that the slope M is equal to Y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is defined as the rise over the run. The figure on the graph on the right-hand side basically demonstrates what the line looks like if p and q both have the same x-coordinate, x1. So you can see we can take several points along this line, and when we connect them, they form a vertical line. Let's look at the following example to see that in more detail. In this question, we are asked to graph the equation x equals 4. So if we go ahead and plot points on the graph with all the x-coordinates being 4, We can plot points 4, 0, 4, 2, 4, 4, 4, 8. And also we can go down into the negative quadrant. We can have point 4, negative 2, point 4, negative 4, point 4, negative 8. So as you can see, when we connect those, we have what forms a vertical line. That brings us to the theorem regarding vertical the lines. The next important Basically, concept we're going to cover of a vertical line. A vertical line is given by an equation of the form x equals a, where a is the x-intercept. 
is the slope-intercept form of an equation. Basically, this theorem states that an equation of a line with slope m and y-intercept b is written as y equals mx plus b. Let's see how that theorem is applied to an example. Here the question says find the slope m and y-intercept b of the equation 2x plus 4y equals 8 and it also asks us to graph the equation. So to obtain the slope and the y-intercept we transform the equation into its slope-intercept form by solving for y. So we're given 2x plus 4y equals 8. Basically our first step would be to go ahead and have 4y equal negative 2x plus 8. And then dividing by 4, we have y equals negative 1 over 2x plus 2. As you can see, we now have the equation in slope-intercept form. We have y equals mx plus b, with the m being the negative 1, 2, and the b being negative 2. So what does that tell us? Well, basically the coefficient here of x is the slope, negative 1 over 2, and the y-intercept is positive 2. The next portion of the question asks us to graph the equation. So basically, we would go ahead and we would start at the point basically, 0, it's 2. Basically, a line we that would goes go through, through those the right two points, two units, point 0, and 2, down one unit point to the point two, 1, two, one. And, you can see the and the graph of that equation would look something like this. on the right shows us the graphical representation of our equation 2x plus 4y equals 8. The next concept we're going to cover relates to parallel lines. There's a theorem relating to parallel lines and it states two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if their slopes are equal and they have different y-intercepts. So you can see we have two important things. We have the if and only if concept right here. So basically we have two important concepts contained in this theorem. We have the if and only if their slopes are equal, slopes equal, and different y-intercepts. Let's go ahead and look at how that theorem relates to an example. In this question they ask us to show that the lines given by the following equations are parallel. So line 1 has the equation 4x plus 6y equals 12 and line 2 has the equation 8x plus 12y equals 0. We need to determine whether these lines have equal slopes and different y-intercepts. So we first write each equation in the slope-intercept form. So basically we're given 4x plus 6y equals 12. We'll go ahead and divide that to get 2x plus 3y equals 6 we'll get 3y equals negative 2x plus 6 and when we go ahead and divide by 3 we get y equals negative 2 over 3x plus 2. So the slope is negative 2 over 3 and the y-intercept is 2. Let's go ahead and look at the equation for line 2. We have 8x plus 12y equals 0. We can go ahead and divide by 2. We get 4x plus 6y equals 0. We know that 6y equals negative 4x. When we move the 4x to the other side, the 0 cancels out. And we have y equals negative 2 over 3x. So the slope here is equal to negative 2 over 3 and the y-intercept would equal 0. Because these lines have the same slope, negative 2 over 3, but different y-intercepts, we do know that the lines are in fact parallel given our definition up here. Equal slopes and different y-intercepts. The final important concept we're covering in this tutorial relates to perpendicular lines. Basically, the theorem states that two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative 1. Let's go ahead and look at an example. In this question, they ask us to find the equation of the line that contains point 1, negative 2 and is perpendicular to the line 
y equals 1 over 2x plus 4. So what's our first step? Well, we go ahead and look at the definition up top. We need to first determine whether these lines have equal slopes and different y-intercepts. So we write each equation in slope-intercept form. So as you will recall, our first step is to write the equation of the given line in sloped-intercept form to find its slope. So we have y equals 1 over 2x plus 4. We would go ahead and write y minus negative 2 equals negative 2 times x minus 1. So we would have y plus 2 equals negative 2x plus 2. And we multiply that negative 2 times negative 1 equals positive 2. We go ahead and solve for y. We get y equals negative 2x or 2x plus y equals 0. So we know that the slope equals negative 1 half. So any line having a slope of negative 2 would be perpendicular to that line. 